We continue our conversations with Brian Pease of the Minnesota Historical Society with a look at the history behind the Civil War battle flags on display in the Capitol Rotunda. Minnesota began a tradition of displaying battle flags after the Battle of Bull Run in 1861. And there was a huge public ceremony in 1905 to bring the battle flags that were in the collection from the old Capitol to the new Capitol in 1905. What have these flags been doing since then? Well, that's an important part of Minnesota's history in recognizing the Minnesota men's involvement in the Civil War. So by virtue of putting the first battle flag on display in the first capital, you set that tradition and that sense of honor and pride to display those flags that these men were dying under uh, as a part of that tradition in Minnesota. So when those uh, old veterans back in 1905 were coming with their flags tightly wrapped around the flagstaff up to this brand new capital, this was a, a great sense of pride and honor because thousands of people came out in this parade to watch probably for a lot of these men the last time they ever marched under their flag. The flags were housed in these display cases, all wound up in tatters. And then in the 60s, they, there was an effort to unfurl them so that you could see them more in, as they would have been on the battlefield. What was the story behind that? Yeah, what was happening, you know, you're getting to the centennial of the Civil War in the 1960s. And so if you were to walk by these cases in the 1960s, you would have seen pieces of the flag on the, on the floor in the case. So they were deteriorating. And it didn't help that they were tightly wrapped around those flag staffs. And so in 1963 and 1964, uh, Tom Welter from St. Paul was hired to conserve the flags. And so he was very innovative. Uh, there weren't a lot of people in the United States conserving flags at that time. So he took it upon himself to design a special sewing machine that would put zigzag stitching so you can encapsulate the original silk in between silk crepeline and then keep all the pieces together and then you can hang it from a flag staff unfurled so you could start seeing elements of those flags once again revealed. So you could really see the flag hanging on the pole but at some point 2009 I think they came to look as they look now. What's the story behind that? What we were doing is we were always looking at the flags and we could see where the zigs and the zags were taking place in that, those unfurled flags you had more separation taking place of the fabric and that kept all the pieces together but gravity was really taking a toll. They had been on, on display for, for decades and so you were seeing fading patterns in the kind of the top of the flag so we really wanted to make sure we preserve these very important artifacts of Minnesota's history so the Minnesota Historical Society took the lead in conserving the flags, taking them off those flag staffs or the flag poles, and then mounting them flat on a specially designed panels. So now we can have those flags on display flat. And, and we I mentioned before, some of those flags had never been seen unfurled before. Well, for probably 150 years, some of these flags had never been seen flat before. How many flags are in the collection and how often do they rotate? Yeah, there's uh, 59 uh, that are part of this collection. There's others that are part of the Minnesota Historical Society collection, and, and we rotate in over time 48 different flags. Some of the flags that are part of the collection are just very small remnants, so there's not really a lot to see, and we want to protect those, those uh, historic relics, just keep them under, uh, under darkness as much as possible. So uh, every eight to nine months, we have four new flags that we rotate in. We try to... Uh, equal the number of regimental flags and national colors. And of the four display cases here too, we do have a flag case for the Spanish-American War because those flags were also transferred to this brand new capital in 1905. I read that some of the bravest men in the Civil War were those that carried the colors. They marched six paces in front of their regiment and were basically the steering wheel for their men. Yeah, it was, uh, for those color bearers, that was a sense of pride and honor because they were selected among the regiment. They were some of the most popular, the most physical, the most respected men. Because you're carrying those flags for a purpose, and that's to protect those flags and to make, make them very visible during campaigns or battles as you're marching into battle or in battle. And so to carry that color, not only were you helping control the direction of the unit as it's going into battle or retreating out of battle, but you also put yourself as a big target. Because each side was trying to shoot down those color bearers because they were once again, com a communication device. And so for those men fighting around those flags, that's representing their nation. That's what they're fighting for, preserving the Union. Or they're fighting with their regimental color, their state color, fighting for their home, fighting for what they believe is an important part of that, 
their participation in the Civil War. Do you have a favorite flag? Uh, well, the one behind us is the flag from the 4th Minnesota Infantry Regiment. And as far as we know, this probably saw a lot of service as in their campaign to Vicksburg. And so once again, that flagstaff was being held by those color bearers. And you can imagine through all those miles of marching and battles, you know, there's the blood, the stains, the sweat, the tears, the dirt, all that history is part of that story. And so when you look at each of these flags, they might not have seen a lot of service, but they were, you know, important parts of Minnesota's history and what these, what these men were fighting for.